Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's Thursday. So I am Araya Onra, coming to you live and for the love of dragons, as I do every Thursday. So um, some of you guys know me, some don't. We've got a lot of new dragons in the group. I'm very excited to see all the big numbers starting to join in and dive in and have experiences and be looking for information. That gets me beyond excited to know how many dragons are waking up right now. And you might have seen my post a couple days ago on Earth Day, or I guess it was just, uh, yeah, two days, yesterday, Earth Day, <laughs> where's the time flying, right? Um, to go out to find a dragon and sing to it. Sing until it sings back. Because every one of you, I guarantee, hello Deborah, hello Lisa, has a dragon somewhere in your neighborhood, in your region, in the waters around you, hello Weldy that is just waiting to be recognized. It might be waiting to be awakened, it might be uh, waiting to be brought into consciousness that humans are ready to see it and interact again. It might be just wanting to recognize a friendly dragon and say, hey, whoa, let's have a discussion here. So if you can go out and start connecting and let that um, song, that heart song of that dragon come through you, allow your heart song to go back to it, hello, Jackie amazing things are going to start happening and I don't know what kind of week you guys are having but I'm having an amazing week of so many new energies and I think you guys are probably feeling this too because I typically have a good read usually on what's going on with the group what's going on with the dragons what's going on with the energy grids of the planet and so once again Somebody was really excited last week that I didn't have a question, so I got to talk about whatever I wanted, and we had a pretty great discussion last week. <laughs> and I think this is going to be maybe a topper to that, because once again, I get to talk about whatever I want. So before I go into that, I do want to just mention how beautiful the new moon energies were last night. Um, there's a lot of new information coming in, and just start paying attention. Be aware listen to your inner radar when you're led to do something or when you like feel that inspiration come up hit you in the gut follow through on it because your guides are so close to you right now the veil the veils have dropped right so your guides are so close to you right now and they are trying to get information to you they're trying to get you moving forward very very quickly uh, and that's partly what i want to talk about today there's new timelines there's a new earth being the templates are being set up in the new earth and so we need to talk about some of these things because there is a timeline on it. Some of you guys have felt um, an urgency almost. And I wouldn't say it's urgent and then we need to just run and spin our wheels and go, ah, oh, I gotta do it. No, it's just about taking every opportunity that comes your way, every gut instinct that comes along, hello Willow, uh, and listening to it and acting upon it because there is, in a sense, a, a, an urgency because we have a finite timeline. We have an amount of time to make a huge shift and make a big difference in what the shift is going to look like. So this is some of the new information I want to share that came in today, um, besides some new dragons that I got to meet. So all kinds of new exciting stuff to discuss today. So on this uh, timeline, feeling uh, and knowing that our current timeline is actually coming to an end. We're reaching the end. It's, if you imagine our entire timeline of the planet that's been this vertical experience, this vertical expansion, um, it has had bookends on it. It's got a beginning and an end. It's got, it's got a specific um, framework that it's been working within. And that framework is shifting. We are moving out of the timelines as we have experienced them before and stepping into a whole new experience. And so that bookend is where we're at. We're coming to the end of the bookend and we're gonna be coming out on the other side into something new and different, into a different way of experiencing. Um, I don't even know if it's gonna be called time, but it's gonna be a different way to maneuver through experience. And as we're going, essentially what, what's happening is we have to step into a new grid. Many of you are aware we have an opportunity, hello Gabriella, uh, to move into this new earth, into a new experience, the age of Aquarius, the golden era, hello Genevieve. Um, all of the things that people have been talking about and working towards, especially those that are in the light worker field that are here trying to hold light and expand themselves, expand others, get people to wake up, and it's um, really about this, this template is ending. 
So as we have an opportunity here, the whole world is in a reset button right now, right? There's a bigger reason behind that. And I talked about some of that last week. There's a bigger aspect going on for us to be in this reset, for us to be brought down into pause, brought down into stillness, because it's in the stillness where we're actually going to get clear on what are we doing here? What is our intention? Where do we want to go? How do we want to live as humanity together on this beautiful planet? And as Gaia actually gets to expand and be fully birthed into her full self in the fifth dimensional realm, that is going to shift everything for us. She gets to have a different experience and we are going to be treating her and experiencing her differently. So in that, we're being asked right now, one, to hold your light to anchor your light. And I love a friend of mine, um, Samantha Fay, incredible light worker, earth angel. She is an amazing being, an amazing medium, and an amazing coach. And she, we were having a discussion last week, um, and she also has sent out something recently saying, hold your light as if your life depended on it. And in that, <laughs> I had some more information come this week, which, which really solidified that in a different way of understanding why because we have this opportunity to hold our light we're being asked right now to go in to get quiet to hold your light because the rest of the world needs it those that are not awake yet that are still living in a, an illusion of there's nothing beyond the physical realm they don't know what the invisible realms are they're not able to access their clear gifts and their guides and their information and their soul family so there's a lot of work to begin in recouping and bringing that whole aspect or that portion of humanity into this new framework. We have to allow that. So holding our light is amplifying what's available on the planet, not only for healing, to move through the virus and the fear and everything else, but in holding that light, we're allowing the rest of the planet to experience their fears, to step out of them and move into a space of contemplation of what is beyond this life. What if this means death for a lot of people? What does that take us into? Because many people don't have a belief of anything beyond this physical. But as we're doing that, there's a double intention, there's multiple intentions in holding our light. One is it takes us and also holds and amplifies our light down into the planet for Gaia to be receiving more light right now as well. But what happens when we get quiet and we hold our light? We tend to go internal, we tend to take a little more meditation space or quiet space. And it's in that space that now this is the crucial piece that I was shown today. The templates of Earth are being constructed right now. The new templates, the, the place that we want to move into and exist within is actually being constructed right now. So if you were to imagine there's a construction team and they're building a high rise and they've got this big complex, this huge development that they're doing, right? And they have a, tem a timeline that they set out that, oh, we've got this amount of time and it's going to take us this long. Well, I was shown today, I was given today, literally today, <laughs> in the last couple of hours, that the new template, the construction has started. I was shown the first um, crystal pyramid that's in place. And as the geometries start to align and get set in place, the interesting kicker is that we don't have the clear, like, this is where it's headed. We get to write it. We get to design it. Our intention is what's going to create the environment and the place that we want to live in. So it's so important right now because by August, I was shown by August, the whole template will be constructed. And it's in the end of the year that we're actually going to be moving into it and beginning to migrate into that new template. So between now and August, it's very crucial to be holding your vision, to sit in that still place within and envision the world that you want to have. The more of us that do that, the more global the picture will become, the easier the template will set into place, and that will be what we move into. Now, some of you, this is an interesting thing that was just shown to me as well today, and it brought me to tears, and it might make you very emotional too, because many of us have been aware that the number of light workers on the planet is probably in a minority to, let's see, there's eight and a half billion people on the planet roughly, right? What percentage are light workers? We've known that we don't have to have a 51% majority to kick over into the new. We have to have a critical mass, and that pendulum mass, or that critical pendulum point, um, is, there's debate about what it is, 21%, 18%, whatever. Whatever that number is, the number of light workers. 
still some of us sit and go, how can that possibly be enough to shift and have this new vision come forward to bring the rest of the planet along with us? And what I was shown today is as we're holding that light, Gaia is also, you know, when, a, when an infant is birthing, when an infant is in vitro, they are visioning their life. Their soul is creating their life and what they're going to experience. They're visioning everything, right? So Gaia also is getting to vision and she is holding the vision of what she wants to have different from now it is now with humanity. And what was beautiful that came through was, do you realize how big her vote is in comparison to ours? We've been wondering how we're going to have that critical like, pendulum weight forward if we're just this you know, minority versus eight and a half billion. But it made it so clear to me and I was brought to tears because there was a vision of all these diamond starlight codes, diamond light codes now being reflected into the atmospheric um, sphere around her that I got this visual of her as if she was like one of us lying on the beach seeing the stars and visioning the future. Don't we all do that? Don't we all have this moment where maybe it's not a beach, maybe it's a, a lake shore or a field or laying on your roof and you look at the stars and you see endless potential and you hold a vision for what you want for your life. And I was shown that she is actually getting the opportunity to do the same thing. She's doing the same thing right now and her vote is much bigger than ours. Hers really counts exponentially. And so yes, hold the vision and know that we are moving forward, but we have to be very clear on what we want to bring. And here I am talking about all this light stuff and most of you are here because of dragons and are going, what does this have to do with the dragons and how is this connected? Because it's all interconnected. Because the grids right now have been held by the dragons since this planet was created. The new grids are being held by different beings. They're moving into the Lyran realm. The golden wing lions are going to be taking over the new grids. It's going to have a different template uh, instead of twelves and trines. It's all going to be based on eights and quads and yes, lots of sacred geometry, but a different setup. It's a different one that brings a higher resonance towards all of us being more connected to divine all the time to that frequency of mother, father, God from the greater central sun, that golden divine light that is going to be a part of it. So the dragons are connected because I'm dragon. This information comes to me in my readings with other dragons because we are so interconnected because the dragons are holding the grid space for it right now and, and pushing and helping rise up the frequency for this wave to pull us through. Hello, Judith and Anna came on. So as we're moving forward into this, be aware the veils are dropped. You're going to start having experiences of more beings around you. And many of you, because you are connected to dragon, are going to have dragons coming around your dragon guides, your dragon family. You're going to experience them more and more. If you're not sure what to do with them, how to connect to them. Oh my gosh, how, I, I'm getting this feeling, but I don't know where to start. There are so many tools available on the website. You've got the book in every format you can imagine. You've got it in three different languages. You've got guided meditations. I'm putting some more out right now. I, I recorded four in the last weekend and I'm getting them translated right, translated right now so I can have the same four in French, the black, the white, black and white merge and the crystal dragon. Those meditations are in process right now so that hopefully within the next week or so because those are the energies we're in right now. We need the black and the white and the crystal frequencies right now to push us through the doorway, to push us forward. So yes, the dragons are a big part of this and I'm trying to get you guys the tools you need to get there. We've got a book club starting a week from today. I am beyond excited about this book club. I think I only have two spaces left. This group, I've got eight of the most amazing individuals right now and I can see there it's going to be powerhouse. There's so much with these eight individuals and how they're connected and I just can't wait to see what unfolds in that six weeks because it's not just about discussing the book. That's sort of like a cover up to get us to be able to have really deep metaphysical discussions that are all connected to the dragons and the light coming in and light language and transformation and the new earth and everything about it, sacred geometry. It all gets brought up and then we get to do meditations together which transform huge things and I know that the power that's going on right now is going to have some amazing transformation so I'm really, really excited to start next Thursday. There's also um, Dragonheart program. I tell you what, I'm not supposed to start it till January. 
I've had some interest already, and this happened last year too, but um, then it unfolded for January. If I have enough people for the next Way of the Dragon Heart group, for that first half is the Eye of the Dragon, I'll start it in the fall. I don't have a problem working two programs at the same time to get another group in that's ready to go, because this is the time. That time is of the essence right now. We have to dive in and go and give our everything because it's really, really time to go forward. Can I join in? How much is this? Anna, if you want to um, message me your email address, I will send you the information. And I will also put in the comments links for the, um, the book club event and the registration. I'll put those both actually in the links for the description of the video for you. Um, so the other interesting piece is, here I am, I'm a dragon, I'm one of the huge dragons. I am a uh, <laughs> one of the Council of Mu, I'm one of the twelve, if you read about it in the book you'll recognize me as the female water dragon, but um, even I, in all of my sessions with people, am still encountering new dragon lineages, because there are dragons from multiple lineages. We've got dragons from the original dragon realms, we've got um, cosmic angelic realm dragons, Cosmic Angelic Realm isn't just angels, there are angelic dragons, uh, rainbow realms, middle earth dragons, uh, flame dragons, I'm not exactly sure which realm they come from, I haven't inquired, I've just experienced them. Today I got to meet a new realm of dragons which has a huge purpose that's aligning for right now and why it was exposed to me because this person needed to wake up to that aspect because they have a huge role moving forward. There are deep earth dragons. This is a new, like below, deeper into the earth than the middle earth dragons. Sitting around, the central core of the planet is crystalline. It's actually shifted to its diamond. It's worked from a diamond flawless frequency about two years ago. And the, the work now is, Gaia's in a, a process of having that core expand out all the way to the edges, to under the dirt, under the grass under the rocks, right here. So that needs to start magnetizing out to pull those crystals growing out bigger and bigger and bigger. The deep earth dragons are the ones that are responsible for that. There are deep earth dragons that are in human form that have this specific role to wake up to that and magnetize. As they wake up to that piece of themselves, they are able to pull and hold that frequency as a guardian of the core of the earth and start pulling and allowing those crystals to grow outward towards them. I met the first one of them today, beyond excited. And in that, I also got to meet, as part of that team, a Moldavite dragon. I've known that there's dragons of all the different uh, realms. You know, we have the ruby, the sapphire, the emerald, those are in the book. Um, I've encountered amethyst dragons and citrine dragons and carnelian gemstone dragons. And now, today, I got to meet a Moldavite dragon. Talk about a beautiful frequency to work with. So, what I'm excited about is that there's always more revealing. No matter how much you are working with something, there will always be more layers to expand you. So, in that, knowing that even I am saying, here I am, I'm still being exposed to new dragons. I am still being exposed to new information. So each, you guys can each keep getting more and more and more as you open to it. So use the tools, get yourself connected so that you start awakening your clair gifts if you don't have them right now, so that you can start feeling connecting to your dragon guides or your dragon self directly and start experiencing it in, in you know, you might walk into a cafe and if you're open, if your radars are on, you're going to experience another dragon in that cafe and be drawn to them and start a conversation that might change <laughs> your lives or something for the planet or something in that neighborhood, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know that you're not going to drive home and on the way home because you popped something open about your belief or awareness of dragons and you've been driving that road for 15, 20 years and all of a sudden you see in the rocks, oh my gosh, there's been a dragon there all this time and I've never seen it. And you're going to pull your car over and you're going to stop and go talk to that dragon and say, how can I serve you? What do you need from me? Why did you finally make yourself known to me? So it's a very exciting time because there's so much revealing right now, there's so much popping open and the frequencies are allowing so much more expansion. And I tell you what, my vision um, has gone through at least two, I want to say three shifts in the last two weeks. My actual physical vision of 
perceiving codes and I want to call them like diamond fractals in the air around me, in the field around me in a different way, which means I'm starting to see more of the fifth dimensional grid. You guys are going to start feeling that too. So I want to talk about my experiences always because it's going to help you understand yours. It's going to bridge a piece of information for you or an experience you had so that you have that aha moment because that's really what I'm here for. I want to click things in a place for you. I want to give you the tools you need to get where you're going. Hello, Bertrand. Uh, yeah, def dragons are definitely around these days. I am so on board with that. There are so many. They are so present. There are also other beings around. I will share that I actually had my first experience with what I would call an, a, an ET or an alien being, a galactic being, um, while I was in bed about four nights ago. I was just awake in the middle of the night, um, laying there, and I had all this light language coming through. and. That has been more and more prevalent as well. Allow that to come through if you feel this crazy stuff that feels like weird code or some craziness wanting to come through your vocal cords, just let it start flowing. If you're in the shower or walking or whatever, just blah, 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 blah. let it come out because it's waking things up within here that are part of your clairvoyance, your clairaudience, your claircognizance, everything. It's going to start opening that up and by bringing the light language through, it sets a field around me that allows some amazing experiences. And I tell you what, by doing that, because I've had light language come through um, both in live streams like this, in my classes, in client sessions, but I don't often or I don't usually have it just like when I'm laying in bed. And this whole stream came and I let it flow through. Hello Arno, good to see you over there in France. Um, I let it come through and I felt this almost spherical space set in around me and this being was there and I could perceive it. It was, um, and I call it an ET or a galactic being because it was a very large round head, big almond shaped blue eyes. And there was just a connection and it was so beautiful and so heart opening and there was no fear and there was no um, ambivalence or agenda or anything. It was just a shared connection knowing that this being is around in my space and wanted to make that bridge of connection. Anna's saying she speaks in tongues or light code as you call. Yeah, and it's interesting how that speaking in tongues um, for a lot of people has, because of their religious background, a negative connotation or a, that's connected to the shadow realms or to darkness or um, something evil. And yet it's, <laughs> it's so full of light and so full of um, what I consider God frequency that it's, it was shut down and called that. It was meant to be demonized by the church because it, it couldn't control. If people are speaking that and allowing God to speak through them in that way, they could no longer control them because they were responsible for their own connection to God. So interesting that you brought that up for us today, Anna. Um, but what I, it was just a beautiful experience to have this being around. And I know that if we are open to it and we allow ourselves to just set our intention to feel the beings around and connect to them because there are hosts of beings right now here. You can feel them in your field or if you invite your awarenesses to be more perceptive, you'll start having those experiences. They can be angels, they can be dragons, they can be galactic beings, they can be star beings, they can be unicorns or being, you know, the beings that are considered mythical or legendary from the rainbow realms um, or some of the middle earth realms with the fairies and the pegasus and the unicorns and the glooming lions coming from the Lyrian realms. There are so many beings here in existence because this time has not been reached before on the planet. That's what's super exciting about it. Humanity has not reached this point before. That's part of the pause. The design in the pause is meant to bring us to a standstill in reverence for what we have achieved. It's meant to bring us to a standstill so that we go inward and vision, so that we take the time. And there's Deborah Hill. She knows about light language. <laughs> She's flowing it all the time with the dragon languages coming through her all down in Aussie land um, and allowing, just allowing all of the stuff that needs to be written in that pause and that silence because there's so many pieces to it. So allow yourself to vision, allow yourself to connect to the beings that are around you, allow yourself to expand into your knowledge and awareness of the dragons and the tools that you have to connect with them because if you're here, it's because you are a dragon, you're connected to the dragon family which is what led you here and to be in my presence and energy and 
that I can offer you and bring tools into your field that might just boost you forward in that way that kicks a door open and boom, then the sky is the limit. So use them. Uh, if you are wanting one of those last spaces, as I said, message me. Um, I've only got two left. I'm going to pencil one in for Anna if she's going to want it. And um, it, it's the time. As I said, it was revealed to me. We have until August to be visioning. So if the construction is going to be complete by August, allow yourself to really vision now. Because tweaking it as we go, tweaking it in July, it's going to be a lot harder than if we just envision from the get-go and put a big vision out there. The more and more of us that do it. So share this out or share the message. Talk to your friends. Say, hey, you know, here we are in this together. What do you want to see for the future? How do you see communities coming together? What would you like to vision the earth and how it's going to be? What are the financial systems going to look like? What are the governmental systems going to look like? What are the economic systems going to look like? What are the water filtration systems going to look like? And a lot of that is going to involve new technology that maybe we can't see right now. But if we hold the vision of, gosh, I want it to be the highest frequency possible. There are technologies that are going to start coming in that we'll be able to channel in for our architects and our water purification system people and our builders and our politicians and our, our leaders. I don't think they're going to be called politicians anymore. I feel like that's something that people want to sort of get rid of, of a vision. Like, let's have leaders. Let's have governing bodies that actually work together and, and are consistently shifting so that the people are always in there and represented. And how does that feel and what does that look like to hold it in place? And I love that, you know what, tiniest country in the world, I put this on a post on my own timeline and shared it last week. But I saw um, an article that Holland had actually uh, adopted a new economic system. It's called the donut economic system or donut model or something like that. Uh, not my field, so I don't follow it too closely. But that they have this centralized, everybody's in the center getting taken care of and in what works best for the earth and, and setting new guidelines that allow all the parameters to be taken care of. And then they have these circumference circles going outward from there that set um, higher and higher availability things so that everybody's base needs are always taken care of. And I love that model and I love that that's a new way of thinking that they're pushing into new economic models because the last ones weren't working, that we're in a place where everything needs to be rewritten. We are not going back to the same normal. This is our opportunity to reset into a new normal that serves everybody better. And so what is your vision for it? Allow it to unfold. Allow your dragon guides and your dragon self to step you forward into what you know and have experienced in other places that works and bring those ideas forward. Those technologies, they were available in Atlantis, and maybe as I was saying, we don't have the, the exact visual of what a water system would look like, that everybody has good pure water all the time, and that there's enough for everybody, that there's good food, good quality, clear food that's not modified, that's not full of chemicals available for everybody. Allow the technology, even if we don't know it yet, to be visioned in that we receive it in order to construct it in the physical but that the templates, the light templates, as we hold that vision, the light templates can hold the potential within them for those technologies to trickle down and be available when we get there. But we have to hold the vision for it first because everything we vision now is basically, by August, the, the construction, the, the light grid behind it, the whole basis of the structure is going to be in place. And that basis, that light grid is what holds all the potential within it. So let's load it with potential. Let's overload it with potential of what we want to see. So really excited. You know, once again, you guys gave me the opportunity uh, to talk about what I felt this week. And um, I hope it was interesting for you and enlightening for you and sort of brought an aha moment here and there. And um, I'm just going to read Anna's feeling at the moment. Very blocked, confused, and overwhelmed with emotions. Is it normal? What do you recommend? Yes, definitely. Uh, and I would say that on that feeling confused and overwhelmed with, emos with emotions right now, there are so many in that place right now. It is normal because there is so much shifting on a daily basis. We literally have, hello DJ, the energy shifting consistently. I talked about this last week on the Tesser. And I want you to go, if you haven't seen it, Anna, because I don't get the feeling that you have, watch last week's video. It's in the archives of the group. 
it's just the one right before this in the video button. You can also go to the YouTube channel, which is Invoke Healing International. There's a specific Dragon playlist, and the video for last Thursday talked about this. It talked about the actual mechanics of the shift going forward into the new earth. That it's like entering a tesser field where we're going to consistently be brought into the next level frequency and then stepped up. And so it feels like almost every day or every two days we're being taken into something new and it is overwhelming and it's very emotional because we're being broken apart. We're having everything rewritten within us. And I'll go on another note within that because I didn't share this part last week. This is another piece of understanding that will help you understand what's going on, especially with our emotional body, our energy body, our mental body. So if you imagine we've got this big frequency wave that we're trying to align to, and there's borders of that frequency wave. There's this end of the wave curve and there's this end of the wave curve. And when we hit either end, what happens when a wave breaks on shore? And say on that shore there's a rock wall or a rock jetty and those waves keep crashing and they crash and they crash. Well, those waves over time are breaking down that wall. They're breaking down the structure and eventually when a really big waves come, like <laughs> I remember a huge wave in Kauai came and set the new high tide line. It was after Aniki, uh, set the new high tide line over a half mile inland, set a whole new shoreline, right? Broke apart foundations of homes that were there. Nothing could stand in the way. So what's happening right now is as we go into this new level of magnetic frequency, it's going to look like a tesser field, it's going to look like this wavelength. As we get brought into it, what's happening on our energy bodies is that we have a finite limit within our energy bodies. There is a designated, like my energy body ends here and yours is over there and I can bring mine in, I can, I can expand it out if I consciously do, but normally it's sitting right here. Yeah, DNA is absolutely changing right now, Bertrand. That's a whole nother discussion. But um, these waves, we've got these frequency waves that we're being pulled into. They're different than we've been working with before. Over here, we were in this frequency wave. So now we're in this new one, and every time it hits that, sh that far side of the wave, it's like a wave hitting the shoreline, which is the edge of your energy body or the edge of your mental body, your furthest level of understanding the edge of your emotional body. And so as those waves break, of course they're gonna make us emotional, they're gonna make us feel mentally overwhelmed, they're gonna make us feel uh, exhausted in one moment and ecstatic the next, and it's like, I feel like I'm going crazy. I'm up, I'm down, I'm everywhere. I'm sad, I'm happy, I, you know? It's all of those bodies. The physical body, as Bertrand just uh, um, <laughs> gave reference to, the DNA is shifting, our cells are shifting. They are going through and being rewritten as well, but it's going to be a more gradual change. So you might feel things going on in your body. Um, we replace our cells, like every, at least our skin cells, every seven days. So between now and the end of the year, when this is complete and we're moved over, um, your body will have rewritten itself multiple times in its cellular structure, in its DNA structure that keeps getting activated to its next level to be able to make the shift. So this is what's happening. You've got all these internal, all your other bodies, your energy body, your mental body, your emotional body, because they're not used to those higher frequency. Your background bodies, you've got other dimensional bodies, they are, they're used to that higher frequency. So it's not as hard for them. But in these others that are part of your parameters all the time, you're constantly beating the shoreline because what are they doing? They're breaking down the jetties to expand those shorelines. They're moving the high tide line up. They're expanding your emotional body. They're expanding your mental body your ability to understand and receive higher concepts. They're expanding your energy body. So allow all that expansion. You might actually feel like, I've been feeling lately like my physical body just keeps expanding. Not really good for my waistline, not really good for my clothes fitting. It's been really frustrating, but I feel like that's part of it. As if my cells, as they're realigning, they're going into something different and they're a bit swollen right now or they're a bit, um, demanding more energy or doing there's something going on I can't pinpoint what it is but I'm just letting it be because I know that for me the importance right now is yes headaches tiredness vivid dreams a lot of dream state stuff going on Candace um, so hopefully yes I'm glad that's making sense I hope that's helping you Anna and um, Amy I'm glad you love the <laughs> explanation 
I felt like, you know, I don't do this a lot on lives where I just keep going on on things, but there's been so much information lately and it is important for us to understand it. So you guys have friends that are going through this as well, either verbally share if you can repeat it or share the video out to them so that other people are hearing it because so many people are in that boat right now. They need to understand what's going on so that they can let go of the fear and the worry of it and drop into stillness. What are we doing in the stillness? We're holding our light. We're bringing more light in. We're letting more of that pass into Gaia for her to amplify her light, her visioning. We're holding our vision for the future. There's so much happening. And why do you think we need a pause? This pause is divinely written into the plan. It's the reset button for all of us, for the whole globe. Because when we're in our go, go, go daily lives, we do not stop for the pause. We do not stop for the visioning. We do not stop for the embracing. We do not stop to deal with all the challenges that our bodies are going through. We just keep going in distraction and we can't do it anymore. Thus, the perfect pause. So enjoy the pause. Enjoy every aspect of it, whether you're getting good sleep or you're not, you're being woken up, you're feeling like you're a mess, let it be and continually go back to your center continue to go back to your light and I am working on getting some guided meditations out that will help with that um, I know the ones I recorded last week were so powerful I'll tell you what the crystal dragon meditation I recorded Sunday it was Monday morning I woke up in the wee hours and I knew I was like okay it's ready I go and I turn on my iPad to set up to do the recording and it's 4 44 a.m. Yeah, I'm up at 4, 4 something a.m. doing work quite often to get you guys the tools you need, but that's when it's aligned. That's when the crystal dragons were ready, and I knew the perfection of the message they were giving me by seeing, ah, 444 as I hit on. All right, here we go. And I tell you what, that was one of the most powerful meditations I've recorded. I'm really excited to get it out to you guys, and I hope that you will take advantage of it. Um, even if you don't have the means to buy an $11 meditation, there's a free crystal dragon meditation, a short 10 minute one that I did. It's in the YouTube channel. It was on the um, Thursday of the spring equinox. I believe it was March 19th. Could have been the 20th, but I'm pretty sure it's the 19th. Go and listen to that. If you need a crystal dragon meditation right now, before I get them out, go and use that one. It's not gonna be as powerhouse, but it's still aligned to bring those crystal frequencies in around you. So um, yeah, 444, 555. <laughs> They're at 3.33, they're all speaking right now. And I wanna put a big shout out because Genevieve is on the, on the um, live right now. She just put a comment on. So I want all of you guys conceptually to send a huge thank you out to Genevieve Bilodeau. She is up in Canada and she is graciously doing the translations of the meditations into French and doing it expeditiously because she knows the importance of getting them out too. So a huge heartfelt thank you from me from all the dragons. Oh, I hope you can feel this. My whole body's tingling, Genevieve. I hope you're feeling this big, huge hug coming from me, all the dragons, and everyone who's watching this call because that is a huge gift to us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, I'm gonna leave you guys with that. Any tools you need, message me, go to the website. Free discovery calls are through the book now button on either homepage of my site or my sites, invokehealing.com and dragonwithin.com. And, um, it's always a pleasure. I love you guys. I look forward to what unfolds in the next week. Oh my goodness, how much came through this week? <laughs> crazy, crazy amounts of stuff in the last month. So more to come. Can't wait to keep unfolding with you guys. And next week, I hope you catch the live next week because I guarantee you, um, I'm glad, yes, they're, they're really on uh, spot on on this time, aren't they, Genevieve? I'm really excited to get them out to everybody. Um, next week starts the book club. And I will tell you a little secret about the book club because it runs from 11.30 to 1.30. So when I come off of that meditation from the book club group, I then come live. So the next six weeks are gonna be some powerhouse lives because I am always lit up. I am always fully in my dragon. You guys always see it. And so the next six weeks of lives are gonna be extra powerhouse because I'll be coming right from book club into them. And they're always exciting. So uh, much love to you guys. I appreciate you. I love that we are here and have this dragon family growing. Feel free to share this out. And this is also sending a huge hug out to everybody who catches this on the replay. Um, hold your vision. Hold your vision. Let's bring it in how we want it to be. Magic, magic, magic. All right. See you guys next week. Bye.